Merry Christmas Image Church. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Krista Rodenheiser and I'm glad you're here to worship our Savior Jesus Christ. My husband Chris and I are grateful for this church family and spend time in prayer for each of you. If you're watching on Facebook, take a minute to start a watch party or to share this post on your timeline. We love when our friends and family can join and worship with us. If you are a guest with us today, welcome. We've prayed specifically for you. Please take a moment to fill out our Connect card. You can find this on our website at imagechurch.com under I'm New or in the Image Church app. Our staff would love the chance to connect with you and we have a small gift card to send. During today's gathering, you can use the Image Church app to take sermon notes and throughout the week to get the latest news from Image Church. You can also use the app to make tithe and offering gifts to support Image Church's mission to make disciples who make disciples of Jesus. Gifts can be made by texting Image Church to 77977 or by mail. Thank you for your continued and your generous support. Each year, we invite our church body to make Jesus the priority in gift giving by considering a special gift to Image Church above and beyond your regular tithes and offerings. Check out this video from Pastor Brian to learn more about how gifts received this year will be invested. Well, hey there, Image Church. I'm standing on stage here at our, in our auditorium, and I want to give you a quick update about some of the projects that we have going on at the church. As you know, this year's One Gift Offering is going to go toward purchasing and replacing a lot of our equi equipment on stage that is either old or broken. So first of all, I want to thank our team that's put in countless hours volunteering to get this project done. So let's take a look at a couple of things that we have going on. If you notice right here on the floor, uh, these aren't new lights. These are going to go up probably tonight as we're recording this video. Um, and that's going to help illuminate the stage so that we can see better online and in person. So if you want to walk with me this way and kind of look up, this is our new screen. Uh, this is a much larger screen. Um, it's going to allow everyone to see what's going on in the auditorium a little bit better and also both in person and online. And behind the screen, we have our new projector as you look up. Uh, this was a necessity. Our old projector actually broke a couple months ago. And so this is also going to help us uh, see what's going on on the screen, whether it be lyrics or sermon points, whatever it may be, both online and in person a lot better. So that's it for the stage. Let's go head up to the booth and see what we have going on up there. Okay, we're up in our booth right now. You're looking at uh, lighting software right now. This is gonna allow our volunteers to control lighting um, easier. And then as we come down here, we have a video switcher. Uh, this will allow us to change uh, camera angles based on what's going on in the service, uh, either worship or Chris is preaching, and that is a new camera. If you come over here, this is an old computer. It's about 10 years old, and so we're trying to replace this. It's real outdated and doesn't really uh, function for us. And so listen, if you have already contributed to our one gift this year, thank you so much. And if you haven't, please consider uh, prayerfully contributing this year to this great work. Now we have a special Bible reading of today's verses from one of our families. This is Matthew 1, 20 and 21. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Merry Christmas, Image Church, from the McDaniels. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Hey, good morning, Image Church. God and sinners are reconciled thanks to Jesus. Let's worship him this morning. Come on.
between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night And through the darkness Your loving kindness Tore through the shadows of my soul The work is finished The end is written Jesus Christ, my living hope Who could imagine so great a mercy What a heart could fathom Such boundless grace The God of ages Stepped down from glory To wear my sin And bear my shame The cross has spoken I am forgiven the King of Kings calls me His own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. His grip on me You have broken every chain There's salvation in your name Jesus Christ, my living hope And came the morning I sealed the promise Your buried body silence, the roaring lion, declare the grave has no claim on me. Then came the morning that sealed the promise, your buried body begins to breathe out of the silence.
gotta be kidding me. <laughs> it's great. Hey, come here, you gotta listen to the story. I have something to show you. <laughs> oh my goodness! First. We gotta tell him how this happened. Well, good morning, Image Church. I'm Sean Newman, and you know me from the worship teams and the greeting teams here at Image. Pastor Chris has given me the privilege to present you week two of our sermon series, Fear Not, We Have Good News. I'm excited to be here today, excited to see what the Lord has in store, and I want to kick off this message today by asking a simple question. What are you afraid of? What drives your greatest fears? Well, in a season like this, and in a time like this, in a year like this, there's probably a lot of things that can come to mind. There's a lot of things to be fearful of. But whether or not it's a health fear, financial fear, societal fear, or any other fear that you could imagine, there's a message that's going to be drawn from our scripture today that just can be summed up in two small words, and that is fear not. I want to invite you today to turn to the book of Matthew. Today we'll be looking at Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. And this is going to be a, the same picture that was provided from the scriptures last week in the book of, look, uh, book of Luke. But this week we're looking into the book of Matthew and focusing on Joseph. So I invite you now to turn to Matthew 1 and we'll be looking at verses 18 to 25. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son and he called his name Jesus. Within the story of the birth of the Messiah, it is Joseph to a large degree that seems to be on the wildest ride of his life. I mean, I know 2020 has been a wild ride for all of us, but can you imagine being in the shoes of Joseph? His wife that he has not known is pregnant, and not only is she pregnant, She's pregnant with the Holy Spirit of the living God. So Joseph's life quickly shifts, dramatically shifts from being a, a righteous man, a craftsman by trade, and even a newlywed to some respect, to a person who has an earth-shattering decision to make. And I want to take a moment right here to humanize Joseph for us today because sometimes we bring up the name of Joseph within the Christmas narr narrative, and it's just a part of the story. But I want you to understand today that Joseph is a real person. He's got rational fears, just like you and I. And it's important for me to say this too, real quick. As people of the Bible who believe in the Jesus of the Bible, we have to too believe in the Josephs of the Bible because it is Joseph that we can recognize fear through because we experience the same types of fears. Joseph is fearful, and he's fearful for a variety of reasons. He's fearful that his wife has perhaps cheated on him. He's fearful, and let's be honest, that she might be lying or she might be crazy to have conceived this story about being pregnant by the Holy Spirit. 
Joseph is fearful that the law might demand him to divorce his wife, something that he doesn't ultimately want to do. He's fearful that he might have to live his life apart from Mary and apart from the child to come. So Joseph is full of fear, including the fear of his reputation being damaged for a situation that he ultimately has no control over. He exists in this moment, and he's wrestling with his fears, and he's feeling the physical manifestations of those fears too, the same way that we examine and feel fear. We feel that pit in our stomach, that pain in our stomach, and we feel the ramifications of a broken heart, and Joseph is right there too. And here's his options. Do I break off this engagement, something that would be considered a divorce by modern day times, or do I surrender myself to the possibility that this is true and just surrender myself to the possibility that the rest of my life, I will be responsible for this wife and this child to come, and I don't know how to handle that. So we have to understand that Joseph is in the midst of his fears, and, and he has a decision to make as a result of those fears. And the one thing that he has to do is decide based on his fears. And the one thing that, the first point in my message today, the first fear factor, if you will, is that fear is always followed by action. Fear is always followed by action. And if you look at your life today, I promise you, you can see this to be true. If you suffer from galeophobia, the fear of sharks, you probably act to not be in deep waters. You're probably the type of person that will go from the sand inward and not go anywhere near an ocean. And that would be understandable. If you have claustrophobia, well, you probably act to know the entrance and exit of every place that you go to, especially in new circumstances. If you experience cholerophobia or fear of clowns, well, you probably don't hang out at the circus. Personally, I suffer from a serious medical condition called roller coaster phobia, and that's why well, I think you get the point. Fear is always followed by action. And in verse 19 of our text today, we can see the derivatives of Joseph's fears play out in his life. Joseph, again, is an honorable man, but he won't just throw his hands up and walk away in the case of Mary, but he, he's got to weigh his options that we've already previously discussed. And whether it's out of the fears that I've already mentioned or the fear of the loss of control over his life, perhaps the fear of religious persecution, Joseph acts to decide to quietly divorce Mary. The text it doesn't allow us the amount of time that Joseph wrestled and suffered in this fear. It might have been moments, it might have been minutes, hours, or days. The text doesn't allow for that. But I believe that we know, based on our own fears, that the longer that we contemplate fear, the longer that we wrestle with fear, the worse off the decisions tend to go. It's almost like fear has a direct relationship with bad decisions. And there's a pastor by the name of Chuck Swindell that actually was quoted saying, fear exists at the root of all sin. And I believe the Bible paints a picture for that as well. If you'll look at the very beginning, Adam and Eve feared missing out of the wisdom of God and the fall happened. Their direct descendants, Cain and Abel, well, Cain was jealous of Abel, fear of comparison, and as a result, he murdered his brother. So that's how we see fear and the consequences or actions of fear play out in a negative way. As Christ followers, we have got to always understand that fear can captivate us. Fear can motivate us to actions at times that are costly actions. But God gives us the power to know that with our fear, that He can overcome that fear. And that brings us to our second fear factor of the day. It's that fear sets the stage for God's work in our lives. Fear sets the stage for God's work in our lives. In verse 20 of our text today, we find Joseph on the cusp of that decision that we've already discussed. He's on the verge of divorcing Mary and moving on. And it's ever so important to realize the context again from which Joseph is making this decision. Yes, it's a decision that we realize is a bad decision, but by the law, the Jewish law, Joseph would be obligated to follow through and he would be considered just as a result. So he's weighing that in his decision. And Joseph would be considered just and righteous by proceeding with the divorce. And he says that he's going to do it honorably, which means in the presence of as few as people as possible, maybe two or three witnesses. 
uh, but he would hold no guilt as a result of this action. And we find that the, the writer Matthew tells us that in the nick of time, in God's perfect timing, God sends a, a messenger into Joseph's dream in the form of an angel. And the angel declares to Joseph the things that he needs to know to understand the full scope of the magnification of what action is to come. The angel reveals to Joseph that the decision that he's planning to make, it doesn't just affect his life or Mary's life or the, even necessarily the child's life, but it affects the lives of every mankind, every man, woman, and child to come. The angel declares that the son to be born is Jesus, the one who, born of a virgin, would save the people from their sins. And suddenly, Joseph, by God's immaculate wisdom and immaculate power, well, he goes from being just a man that's righteous to being the father of a savior and the caretaker of the Messiah by which he and the Jewish people had anticipated for generations to come. Verse 24 shows us that Joseph takes this word, this news, this good news that the angel of the Lord provided, and he acts based on that good news, and he decides to, to take Mary as his wife and allow God to work uniquely through his life. He surrenders to God's perfect will. Brings me to my final fear factor of the day, and that is fear can remind us of the perfecter of our faith. Fear can remind us of the perfecter of our faith. God in his divine wisdom actually gives us the ability to fear. No one really needs to see or understand that because we examine it, we feel it, we know that we have the capacity to fear. But what we see is something that we often struggle with or oftentimes succumb to, God sees as an opportunity. He uses human fear to give us reminder of who's ultimately in control. It could even be said that without great fear, there couldn't possibly be great faith. There's a definitely relationship between fear and trust and trust and faith. And without great fear, you probably have never experienced great faith. Take a look at Joseph again. He, he goes forward in his life having received this prophetic word from the angel and he decided to unite with Mary, but God doesn't give life instruction book to Joseph moving forward. Joseph isn't given a happy ending in the midst of this prophetic word. Joseph doesn't know the troubles that are going to come. Joseph doesn't know what he, to he's going to expect and how he's supposed to raise his child with Mary. He doesn't know that everything's going to go well. He doesn't even know that the child that has been professed as Jesus, the King of Kings, the King of the Jews, will not be raised in any type of kingly condition but be born in a lowly manger. Joseph isn't told that everything is going to go right for him and Mary, yet he still steps forward and embraces the fact that God has control over his life, surrendering any and all fears over this circumstance to God. Joseph sees that his life, in a way that only God can ascribe to him, is going to make a difference in the lives of everyone. And he surrenders to that. He takes a leap of incredible God-powered faith that was initially driven by fear. Rather than falling into the, the doldrums of his fears, he, he doesn't act in self-preservation or in obedience to any given law. No, he's obedient to God by faith in response to his ultimate fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is a statement that you will find in several places within the Old Testament text. It, it really ultimately means to, to be in respect of God, to be in awe of God, to be in wonder of God, to place God at the height of all of your possible fears so that He is ultimately acknowledged as the one in control and over your fears. We find that statement in Proverbs 19, uh, Proverbs 9, 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And we understand that that indicates that fear of the Lord is a healthy fear. And it means that, that healthiness comes from our fear, our reverence, our respect of the Lord. Not only does, does 
God provide for Joseph all the way through his life, through this healthy fear of the Lord. But if you were to examine the text again that we reviewed today, you'll understand that God had provided a unique way for Joseph to play a role in this story before Joseph was even born. It exists in that phrase where the angel declares Joseph as the son of David. The prophecy for the Old Testament stated that Jesus would come from the son of David. So from this, we know that it's not about Joseph's righteousness or Joseph's profession or Joseph's ability to handle his faith or handle his fear, but ultimately about a God's plan, about God's plan of redemption, which was in place, was in practice long before Joseph was even born. You know, before Jesus took the cross, 33 years into his life, he spoke to his disciples about the subject of fear. He spoke to them about the fears that they would encounter in this world. He spoke to them about the litany of anxieties and troubles and sufferings that he's, his people, his disciples would literally experience in this time. But as he concludes in talking about the ramifications of following Christ, he says this, and I want you to hear this, church, because this, this, this is the sum of all fears, if you will. Jesus says this in John 16, verse 33. I've said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. You want to find the solution for your fears this Christmas? You want to find the solution for hope this Christmas? Find Christ in the middle of your fears and your troubles and your suffering, and I promise you, you'll find that great hope. You want to find the best Christmas gift ever this Christmas? Unpack the power of the Holy Spirit that exists in the heart and in the soul of every believer so that you understand that God can overcome any and all fears and to realize that God has sent Jesus to pardon you from sin, to be the champion over any and all fears in your life. But when you realize this, when you unwrap that gift that God has provided for free only by grace, don't just take a receipt of it, share it. Share the good news. Share the ability for God to change lives through the way that only God could, through Jesus Christ, through his birth, death, and resurrection. We have been given so much, the greatest gift ever. And you wanna give the greatest gift ever this Christmas? Share that good news. And as we wrap up, church, I just want to say thanks again for having me here. I've been so blessed to be a part of Image and to grow into ministry with you all. I hope to, that you have a wonderful holiday season. Merry Christmas if I don't see you next week for our live service. And I just want to end the service at all with this. Imagine this, okay? Imagine reminding ourselves daily that human fear can drive godly faith into action. Human fear, godly faith into action. God bless.
If you've made a decision to follow Jesus today, believe me, we want to know. That's what we're here for. We want to help people follow Jesus. So if you surrender your life to Jesus, which means you repent of your sins and you commit it by faith to believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that He died for you, that He rose again, and you laid down your life, like you surrender to follow Him, we want to know. Please let us know. We want to help you. If you took a next step today in your faith, maybe it's a decision that you made, something that God has called you to, and you decided that decision today, we want to know about that as well. You can email us, info at imagechurch.com, and we would love to know about that. You can also leave a comment here below. Thanks so much to Sean for for preaching the word uh, to us today. We're so grateful to have uh, people in our church that can teach and preach and that we can learn from. Let's continue to follow Jesus. Let's stay surrendered to him. We know it's Christmas and that brings about hope and especially the hope of Jesus. Also, we've worshiped in various ways today. We've worshiped through the word, through the gospel, through singing songs that lift Jesus on high. And now we want to worship by giving back to him. So I want to challenge us and encourage us to give generously, cheerfully, and sacrificially towards the work of the mission, specifically the mission here at Emmons Church to keep proclaiming the gospel. So as we pray in just a moment, please pray about how you would be a part of this. Also remember, we have our one gift offering, which is above and beyond our regular tithes and offerings. We can give towards that, and that's just going to help fuel this mission of of proclaiming the gospel and making new disciples that make disciples. So pray with me. Father, I pray now as we give that we would give generously, cheerfully, and sacrificially towards the work of your mission. Father, we know that this has been a tough year, but God, may we be the church right now more than ever, especially at this time of year. And, And may we be a generous people and give towards this great work. And we do this as an act of worship to you. In Jesus' name that I pray, amen. Let me give you, let me say a couple more things to you. Listen, we're having our in-person gathering on December 20th. We know that that some can't meet in person, so we will be streaming online at 11 a.m. that day. But if you can make it, please do us a favor and and please register. We really need you to pre-register before you come. And so we have two worship gatherings that day, one at 9.30, one at 11. So please make sure you pre-register for that for Sunday, December 20th, 9.30 and 11. And hey, as always, we'll see you next Sunday.